From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, a Ben J. Shap LLC production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Today, we're going to discuss the marketing of ideas. Joining us is Marie Incontrera, who is the founder of Incontrera Consulting, which is a speaker, social media, publicity, and TEDx placement consultancy. Marie's clients include national best-selling authors, medical professionals, science and wellness experts, and she's also the author of a book called Spread Your Ideas, How to Bring Your TEDx-Style Idea from the Blank Page to the Stage. Today, Maria is going to tell us how she advises her clients on how to package their ideas for promotion. Here's the first part of our interview with Marie Incontrera, founder of Incontrera Consulting. Marie, welcome to the MarTech Podcast. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Based on the bio that we just read, I'm assuming that you are not a first-time public speaker. No, I'm not. I, I did two TEDx talks this past summer. Congratulations. I actually just listened to one of them and sounds like you also have a rich background in music. You're a musician. That's right. Any uh, instrument of specialty or do you play everything? My main instrument was piano and I went to school for composition. So I'm a composer by trade. And I also had a 15th big band that I used to lead called the Eco Music Big Band. So that's sort of where the idea for my first TED talk came. Right. That was an interesting talk for anybody who hasn't heard it. It was a lot about how you can use jazz music as a template for innovation, how jazz musicians have to be creative and continue playing even if they don't know the song. I thought it was very inspiring. So thank you for creating it and congratulations. Thank you so much. So tell me a little bit about how you got from being a musician into your consulting business where you're helping innovators, the tech community, and also people outside of the tech community to help market their ideas. It's a funny story, actually. So I went to school for music and I ended up working in avant-garde classical and avant-garde jazz, meaning that I was writing my own music and I was playing music by living composers. So my jazz band didn't play standards. We commissioned music and we performed first time pieces never before heard. And the thing about being a musician is that you can really be at the top of your game and be very, very successful and also remain broke. You know what they say? What's the difference between a jazz musician and a large cheese pizza? Uh, The cheese pizza you can eat or something like that. The cheese pizza can feed a family of four. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, sorry. (laughs) How do you make a jazz musician a million dollars? I don't know how. Start with 2 million. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Okay. So clearly there was a reason why you wanted to move away from being a jazz musician monetarily. Right. (laughs) How'd you bridge the gap? So I was living the musician lifestyle, which was gigging all the time and teaching. And I had a million side hustles and I still was pretty broke. And I was sort of living hand to mouth and everything. And I was getting older and Oh boy, I enjoyed it very much. I wanted more out of life. And one day, one of my friends who happened to be a business consultant and business author, I'll never forget it. I was at my job teaching music and I looked at my phone and I had a text message from her and she said, I have an idea for you. Quit your job and become a virtual assistant. And I said, "Uh, what? (laughs) So I spoke with her and we had a couple of meetings about it. And she said, I can help you. I have clients who need a virtual assistant. So maybe you could get into this and you'll make more money and you won't have to commute and you could still play music and set your own schedule and all that. So I set a date to quit my job teaching because I was teaching part-time. And I made the leap in May of 2016. Tell me what you mean by virtual assistant. 
So at the time, I didn't start out as a consultant. I started out working, doing assistantships, basically for online entrepreneurs and executives. Mm -hmm. That could look like anything from miscellaneous email tasks or scheduling tasks or updating their website or helping them proofread copy for certain things. And then eventually people started coming to me for social media and for podcast publicity. And then finally, one of my clients said, Hey, do you think you could pitch me for a TEDx talk? And I said, well, I'll give it a try. No guarantees, of course, because I knew I loved TED Talks and I thought they were a great model. And I listened to them nonstop, but I didn't know if I would be able to get him on a talk. And within a month, he ended up getting on two. So there's a big leap there between I'm a jazz musician to now I am helping marketing execs get onto TED Talks. And what you're calling a virtual assistant is essentially you started off as an administrative assistant, but you're doing it in a capacity where you're not working in the same office as someone. And that's why you call it a virtual assistant. Exactly. Okay. So you go from being a virtual assistant and that helps you get into doing marketing administration and you learn a little bit about social media and this TED Talk model comes up. And you said you were interested in TED Talks. Tell me a little bit about why that was such an interesting channel to you. Well, a TED Talk is a short talk about an idea. And one of my friends had given one. And I thought it was a really brilliant way to create some expertise and some actionability around your idea. And what I started to discover as I started working with this client, who was my virtual assistant client was that if you're a professional, if you work with ideas, if you're an entrepreneur, you probably have a TED Talk in you. It's just a matter of honing it and making it adhere to the TED style. I want to put a pin in talking too much about TED Talks. And I actually want to go into a little detail about how you're helping people cultivate the TED Talk style ideas. Because that's really the central theme of your book, right? Is bringing your idea from a blank page to the stage. So talk to me about how you work with your clients when they have an idea. Everybody has an idea. Like I've been a marketing consultant for years. I guess I've been doing it professionally for three years full time. And I'm a podcaster for close to a year now. I don't necessarily have an idea that I'm rushing to be on stage to start shouting from the rooftops. How do you advise people to figure out what they want to say? So what we would do for somebody who like what you're saying, oh, I don't know if I have an idea. I'm kind of not rushing for it. If somebody comes to me and says, I don't know if I have an idea, what we do is we look at their content and what they're creating and we start to look for common themes. That could be anything from one of my clients is a C-suite executive who specializes in wellness off the clock. She's really fit and she's really active. So a lot of her thought leadership and a lot of her blogs are about how wellness affects the C-suite in a positive way and how leaders really need to be setting an example by being well and practicing good wellness in their lives. Or another example might be an author client of mine who is a career coach and she has a book about ditching your inner critic at work. Mm -hmm. That's an idea. She's always blogging about that. She's always on podcasts talking about that. So you kind of look at what the market wants to hear from you, what your most successful ideas are. And by the way, the longer you're doing something like a podcast or like blogging, you'll start to see motifs. So you start to develop an underlying theme based on looking at the work that somebody has already done, what they've already gone on the record, and you're trying to mine their thoughts for central themes. Exactly. And then we'll take those ideas and we'll really start to hone them down into actionable, short, specific ideas. And we want to look for something that only you can say. So I call this the mindfulness problem. I can't tell you how many clients have come to me and said, hey, I want to give a talk about being mindful. And I'm like, yeah, you and everybody else. <laughs> you know? yeah. And hey, wellness is important too. Right. Exactly. But if you have a very, very specific angle or you are the expert on something, that's when I would say, okay, give the mindfulness talk. Okay. So honestly, what's going through my head is when I launched my consulting business, I tried to write some pithy copy to describe my point of differentiation. And I came up with a tagline that said, my goal is to help you give your brand a voice. 
And out of helping people give their brand a voice came this process where I would help do brand development, which is really an internal look into the people working at a company and how they feel about the mission that they're trying to accomplish, coming up with a central theme, and then saying that publicly in a way that reflects and talks to what their customers' pain points are. So, hey, give your brand a voice. And now we're talking to ourselves and talking to our customers and figuring out what the overlap is. And that is what feels authentic. How do I turn that into a TED Talk? And why would I think about doing it? Well, that's a great question. And actually, I loved your brand of voice. Thank you. I thought that that might be something that's the idea worth spreading. So I advise that every application should start with my idea worth spreading is... And then you have something super grabby, super thought provoking, something that people can't not click on that, Mm -hmm. especially if they're looking for something around branding and speaking to your customers and all that. That's your idea worth spreading. Yeah. The funny thing is not to make this a therapy session for me, but hey, it's my podcast. (laughs) The going into that copywriting exercise, I was coming out of a time where I had kind of a painful exit from a company. We left on mutual terms, but it was just time to go. And I was trying to think of what I authentically did well. And I was thinking back to when I was younger and in high school, I did a lot of theater and played a lot of music and was a singer. Nice. So I always felt like my voice was my instrument. And I was shoehorned into a digital marketing, performance marketing role and felt like, well, that wasn't really a fit. What I need to be doing is going out and talking to people and understanding sort of the humanity behind what they're doing. Hence, give your brand a voice. Right. Yeah. And that story, just to follow this thread of what would your talk look like? Mm -hmm. And this is sort of how I coach my clients is we say, why are you the expert? Well, that story right there is what's going to draw the audience in. It's going to make them interested in you and what you have to say. And that gives you instant credibility on the stage for, hey, why am I talking to you about Give Your Brand a Voice? Because I had a big set of pipes in high school. Exactly. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) I mean, of course, you know, there's some honing to that story, but that's basically the long and short of it. And then you start going into your research and what the actionable steps are that they can take. So there's a process here that's really interesting to me about cultivating an idea where I sort of had something that felt inherently genuine to how I wanted to position myself as a consultant. And I had a tagline and you're saying, okay, well, why did you have that tagline? Work backwards from that and create your story. But when you're actually presenting the content, you're putting that up front. Hey, give your brand a voice. Here's the story of me, not here's my story. And that's why you want to give your brand a voice. Exactly. So here's the big distinction with a book or a blog or a podcast, even if people want to recontextualize something, they can go back and listen or they can go back and reread. But with a talk, you can't do that. Everything has to kind of flow in in a certain way that if you don't grab the audience, there's no going back and them saying, oh, right, this is why you were talking about that. No, you have to present your why first and then you go into your actionable items. So essentially, it's why should you be listening to me? Who am I? What am I talking about? Exactly. And then that story has to be super short. It has to be succinct because at the end of it, the idea is not about you. You're the vessel for the idea. But here's why you're talking about it. Now, here's the global idea that you have that's relevant to everybody. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Talk to me about why people are doing this. Why is the marketing of idea something that is so prevalent? TED Talks have obviously taken off, but more people are writing books. And hey, I'm a podcast creator. I'm trying to reflect what people's ideas are constantly. Why are people trying to market ideas? I think ideas are really taking off because of the internet and because of the social media platforms. And it might seem like my offerings are really eclectic, but the reason that they all tie in is because they all come back to providing value to your customer for free online. That's your way of cutting through the noise and saying, here's why you should buy from me instead of the other 8 million coaches and consultants out there. Okay. So help me bridge the gap here between I have a provocative, interesting idea and it's differentiated and it's going to provide value to my customers. Like I can get up and give a TED talk about why giving your brand a voice is a great idea. 
is that necessarily meant to help promote my podcast or my consulting business? Like that's where I see all these people doing TED Talks and podcasts. And obviously I'm one of them and writing blog posts and there's personal positioning. And at times I struggle with the podcast for me is it's lead gen for my consulting business on some capacity, but I'm also trying to make, and I've been very clear about this, an advertising driven business to provide value to the MarTech community. So I have a reason for the self-promotion. It seems like some people are getting up and giving TED Talks because they want their ideas heard, but I'm not necessarily connecting the dots between how it provides value to their customers. The catch-22 there is that TEDx, you're not allowed to sell from the stage. So you can't say, I have this book and here's why the book is a value. But you can talk about the ideas in the book and the research in the book. Mm -hmm. And really where TEDx has value is in social proof. That's the number one thing, especially if you're an ideas person, if you are a content creator, or if you have intellectual capital that's part of your business. A TED Talk or a TEDx Talk is really the paramount thing that you can do to position yourself as an expert. And it is an investment. It's something that you have to invest time and you can't get paid to do a TED Talk. So you're investing the travel. And if you have to hire a speaker coach or someone to help you with the idea, that's an investment. But it ends up being a really good investment for your business. And I'll give you an example. The month that I did my TED Talks, I started earning more money. Hey, that's great. (laughs) I'm very happy for you. Thanks. I'd love to hear why and how that happened. But I think what I'm taking away from this is... And maybe the question that I didn't ask is the who. Who is doing the TED Talks? And it sounds like the way that you're describing the value people are getting out of this is that it is people that are consultants, right? That are in professional services, but their products are basically their idea. And it serves as a positioning exercise and an authority building mechanism for them. Yeah. And it's not just limited to consultants, coaches, or online business people, in-person business people, people with brick and mortars that have some sort of idea capital. It could be anybody. Anybody can give a TED Talk. And that's the really great thing about it. It could be an author. It could be a teacher. One of the best TED Talks I saw was from the groundskeeper at Shea Stadium. (laughs) How to get over a consistent losing. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry, Mets fans. <laughs> That's hilarious. Sean Bean, I apologize. <laughs> I tend to agree with you, but you know. Yeah. Um, but I think his talk was about the athlete's mindset and what that means. So that's just an example. Anybody can give a TED Talk as long as it's well positioned and they are an expert in something. Interesting. I want to hear about the mechanics of TED Talks. And specifically, I want to hear about how your business performed after you gave your TED Talks. But let's land the plane here on this episode. And we're going to talk about that one tomorrow. So that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks to Marie Incontrera, the founder of Incontrera Consulting, for joining us. In part two of this episode, which we'll publish tomorrow, Marie is going to tell us about how and why the TEDx platform is valuable for the distribution of ideas. And if you can't wait until our next episode and you'd like to learn more about Marie, you can click on the link to her bio in our show notes or go to incontrera.com. That's I-N-C-O-N-T-R-E-R-A.com. If you're a subscriber to the MarTech Podcast, thank you for being a member of our community. We always want to hear from you. So we created benjshap.com slash question, where you can send us your marketing questions, which we'll answer live on our show. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. My handle is benjshap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P on LinkedIn and Twitter. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a weekly stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, in addition to part two of our conversation with Marie and Contrera, we've got some great episodes lined up over the next few weeks. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. Okay, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. 